Okay guys, so it's James Goddard bringing you another lesson from down here at the Quest Golf Academy. So this is my student Carl, and Carl's been coming to me for around about three months now. And in that space of time we've had three lessons and made some pretty big improvements to the swing itself. But also, Carl's been seeing some pretty drastic changes and improvements to his scoring on the golf course. Which is ultimately is what we're trying to do. So I believe Carl had his personal best of an eight over, which playing off a handicap of 14 and round a pretty tough golf course is a great knock. So well done for that, Carl. And hopefully we can have some more improvements going forward into this year. So on the right now, you'll see one of Carl's swings from a previous lesson. And I wanted to bring this swing up just so you can sort of see the differences and I can highlight some of the changes we've made over the past month or so. So, I'll just play Carl's swing through. What Carl always had a tendency to do was he just got the club a little bit sucked in behind him here. And when we got to this position here, lead on parallel to the floor, you can see how he would always have a tendency to get the club a little bit flat and the shaft plane itself would be pointed outside the golf ball. So from there, Carl would take it on to the top. And I just want you to pay particular attention to this position here, so this lead wrist. So Carl would always have a tendency again to get the swing a little bit long, mainly due to this position. And if I just start him down, you'll see how the shaft gets a little bit steep. And last part of the floor, the club is now outside the hands, which with uh, he had a result in, in an open club face. So that resulted in a ball flight that was very weak and always started left and moved right. So Carl's been working pretty hard over the last month or so on these basic backswing movements and we wanted to pro progress that forward today and talk about lead wrist conditions. So, this was one of Carl's first swings today. So you can see it now at first position here, the club's a little bit outside of his hands but I did make Carl aware of that and that's something he's just going to keep an eye on in the future. But a much better position rather than being sucked inside here. So if we take him to lead arm parallel to the floor, you can see that the club is in now is in a much better position. So he sets the club in a great position here. And today's the point of today's lesson, if I just scroll this one back here, I asked you to pay particular attention to that lead wrist on the right hand side and for good reason. That lead wrist there is in what we would call a position of extension. So lead wrist extension. And what that did, it did two things. It got the club face open which in turn Carl would have to react to that in his transition, but it also got the swing long, so he'd always have a little bit of an overswing. So we were aware of that in the first lesson, but we just wanted to work on the movements first before we tackled the issue of the wrists. And this is what we're working on today in today's lesson on the left here. So you can see now he sets the club in, in, in a much better position due to the hard work he's put in over the past month. But we just talked about how getting this lead wrist here into an element of flexion. So the only thought I gave him was lead wrist, lead arm were almost an extension of each other. So there was no cupping in that lead wrist. You can see here, if I scroll him back at this point here, you can see how now he's got a bit of a cup in that lead wrist. Whereas there, it's pretty much flat. So a much, much better position here. Um, if I take him onto the top of the backswing, so from there, Carl would turn to the top of his backswing, and you can again see the difference here in the two. So, how much better is that position? Uh, lead, lead wrist, lead forearm are almost an extension of each other. There's no cupping in that wrist anymore, and also the club face. You can see how the club face is very neutral, pretty much matching these these two here as well. So great position at the at the top there, and it's no longer an overswing. And I wanted to show you this little bit here, because what Carl does, he actually does a little bit of experimenting to feel the difference between, I was asking him to put it into a position of flexion, and I was also asking him to put it into a position of extension. So I'm just going to demonstrate what he was doing and those positions there so you understand. And, alternate, and also what it actually does to the shaft when we get him to change the position. So... There we go. So I ask him now on the left to put it into a position of extension. So he's going to cut the wrist and just watch the shaft move from 
here and all he does is change his wrist to there just by altering the wrist condition so in this now this big cup would be classed as a position of extension and you can see how that steepens the shaft so if we take that back so we put it into a position of flexion you can see how it shallows the shaft so extension flexion you can see there what just by changing the wrist conditions what it actually does to the angle of the shaft so I wanted to show you that just so you had an understanding of what the purpose of this lesson was all about I'll just bring in one of Carl's last swings of the day so we didn't hit a ball here but you can see the improvement is massive so he sets the club here and now you can see our lead wrist and lead forearm are together as one he takes uh, takes him on to back onto the top of his back swing and the difference there between the two is just astronomical it's on the other other side of the scale so great position at the top lead wrist lead forearm are as, are as one instead of this versus this we've now got this so great position uh, and as a consequence of that the club face is now in a much better position and the Carl's only thought in transition was I just wanted him to maintain that angle so once he paused at the top he felt that lead wrist in that position of flexion he just maintained that on the downswing didn't put I didn't want him to put it into extension because we know if we put it in extension that steepens the shaft just maintain that on the transition and this was Carl's transition from there. So he sets the club in a great position. And you can see, because he's keeping this wrist condition here, maintaining it, you can see how the club wants to fall behind him here. So it's shallowing, 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 shallowing. Lovely. And he sets the club here in a great position. And from there, he can simply just turn on and through. So he just rotate his body through the hitting area great release that's a fantastic release so huge improvements to Carl's backswing and transition Carl's swing is actually coming on really nicely I'm excited to see the progress of when he when he comes to see me next week um, guys let me know what you think of these changes I hope you understand them please drop any comments if there's any sort of element of uh, a lack of understanding I'd be more than happy to answer your questions uh, again please subscribe to the channel and follow me on all my other social media platforms.